or lease from in the morning. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Badger News. I am your host, as always, the ever anxious. So the dog. <laughs> he, I can hear the dog. I already. know. I know. Sorry, I, <laughs> I muted too late. Yeah, she's. It's all right. I am your host, as always, the Simpsons kin, the ever delightful Max Starrett. Forgive me if I sound a little bit anxious, overexcited. It's because I see the Last Jedi in the next three hours. And I need those hours to come by a whole lot faster because I can't wait. But that's probably not of interest to you. Uh, what is of interest to you is my co-panelist for today. She is she who must be obeyed, as she likes to be referred to. Always, always, always. And, and that's always. just a pipe dream because uh, I am never obeyed. Dog! Oh, my God! <laughs> yes, your, your dog is the, the clearest proof of that. Uh, yes, absolutely. She is 100% disobedient, and vi- she's a very bad dog. Very bad. You know, the the other day when um, Brian announced that he'd gotten a new dog, a lot of people in the uh, the chat stream when we were doing the poll cat were suggesting the name, Oh My God, Dog, for, uh, for him to refer to. <laughs> <laughs> oh My God, Dog! Yeah, yeah. Or how about, I will fucking kill you. Right. Um, yeah. Well, that might be referred to as animal abuse, and uh, you know, we want Honey Badger Radio to have a good, good image to we, present. We want to set an example, do we? Yeah. Oh my God, dog! I will fucking kill you. She doesn't understand what that means. <laughs> she so. just stares at you with loving eyes he, and pants. Yeah, yeah, and then eats another Kleenex or box of Kleenexes, <laughs> depending. <laughs> that. That sounds so remarkably like my dog. But anyways, uh, we you guys don't care about uh, animals eating stuff that they shouldn't be eating. What we are here to talk about today is a former young Turk. And unfortunately, we have to defend him because, you know, we like to stick to our principles here at Honey Badger Radio in respect to a current kerfuffle that he's involved in. So Jordan Cheriton, reporter and former employee for the Young Turks, is suing Huff post for label and defamation to the tune of 23.5 million dollars this is in response to a since deleted post detailing allegations of sexual misconduct leveled against him the man who posted the supposedly false article christian chiaculis later republished the allegations on a different platform because you know people tend to be like that the 23.5 million dollar total breaks down as follows $20 $20 million in punitive damages from HuffPost for publishing what he, uh, Jordan called egregious, reckless, malicious, and unwarranted claims about him, as well $3.5 million for damages to his personal and professional reputation, business opportunities, and livelihood. Neither HuffPost or its parent company Oath have issued any statements on the matter, even when requested. A spokesperson for Cheridan said the following on the matter. Quote, the public has a right to know what is journalism versus what functions with the level of fact-checking and ethical oversight on par with a bathroom wall. Trials by social media must not become the law of the land. Cheriton told Politico that he was also weighing legal action against his former employer, the Young Turks, as well as other outlets who had reported on the allegations. Sheridan was fired from the Young Turks two days after the allegations surfaced online. His former boss, Cenk, make me a sandwich, Uger, admits that the organization did not investigate whether any assault took place. His reasoning for this was that Sheridan had committed a clearing, clear firing offense by sexually engaging with a subordinate. So, that's all the information that we have at the moment. Karen, we'd heard about this a, a couple months ago, I believe it was. In respect to stuff like this, this is sort of the side effect to what... Uh, otherwise i perceive as to be a good situation you know you have a whole bunch of women trying to prosecute assholes you know people that deserved it but unfortunately uh, uh you know a dreaded other element to this was obviously the fact that people might be falsely accused and now we don't know if somebody has been falsely accused in this respect but even if they are the the fact that uh, he's being treated the way that he is it's not uh, becoming of the way that we should be prosecuting these types of crimes well in in this uh, in the current climate it's impossible for you know and I, I have to I have to sympathize with Chank. Um, if this came after, um, if these revelations in, in HuffPo, uh, uh, accurate or not, um, if they emerged after Weinstein, um, after all of that, uh, I, I got a feel for the guy, like, what's he going to do? 
um, mm. what's he supposed to do? Like he, he has to essentially, uh, you know, I don't think, I don't think it's a fireable offense unless it's in their contract. Um, I don't think it's a fire, fireable offense to fraternize essentially with, uh, your subordinates to, to have, uh, sexual relations with your subordinates. Um, I don't think that that's actually something that's commonplace, a, a common rule in, uh, in any, uh, company, um, in terms of, like, if, if you even look at, uh, how relationships are formed, right? Tons and tons and tons of relationships and marriages, long-term relationships and marriages start at work between people who are not absolutely even Steven in the hierarchy with each other. Um, so like, how, how do you parse that with a rule, a blanket rule that it's a fireable offense or a firing offense to, you know, have any kind of relationship with a subordinate. It's, it's like, it's absolutely ridiculous. And it's a ridiculous policing of, of humans, human beings, private behavior. Um, mm. you know, like the military regulates this, but I, I don't think that it's, it's reasonable for private corporations and stuff to regulate this. And if they, I would love to see the contract that, uh, you know, this young man signed, um, and whether that that's actually stipulated in the contract when he took employment at the, the young Turks. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so I think that that's an easy excuse for Chank, um, to actually come out and say, because he didn't do an investigation. There was no investigation. There was nothing. Um, but he's like, well, but he had an affair with a subordinate and therefore, you know, we fired him for that, not over the allegations, but over that, when in reality, he fired the guy over the allegations. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, you know, like it's, it's hard to blame someone for doing that in the current sort of climate. Um, yeah. you know, like it, it's what, what are you going to do? Um, because if you, if you keep the guy employed and it turns out that it's actually true, right? <laughs> you know, um, you're, you've lost all credibility. I mean, we're in the midst of a burgeoning moral panic over this, right? Uh, this whole me too thing. And, uh, and there's just, there's, there are going to be innocent people, I'm sure, caught in the crossfire, just like there were in the satanic, uh, daycare abuse, uh, moral panic of the 80s and 90s, like there were in the yeah. video game, you know, uh, violence, moral panic, you know, all, uh, the dungeons, dungeons and dragons moral panic, right? All of these big, huge moral panics, there, there are innocent people who end up being hurt by that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be a, a really difficult decision to maybe stick your neck out and, uh, and say, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to fire this person. Um, even though he might actually be guilty. Yeah. 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 I understand what you're saying. Cause on the one hand, you're an employer yeah. and you're also a progressive commentator and, Obviously, as a progressive commentator, whether you're talking about uh, places like the Young Turks or the Huff Post, Huffington Post, they're uh, obviously very much on the side of believing women. They probably parroted the uh, belief that only 2% of rape accusations are false. And so what are you going to do in that particular circumstance? Obviously, um, Cenk did what seemed like the only logical thing. But it, then again, it's like you, you sort of have to just lean back and shake your head at the irony of, of all this. Because, you know, this is something that uh, like people like you and Allison and everybody else over at Honey Badger Radio and, uh, you know, people within our community have been saying is that... It, when you give in to this moral panic, you know, like understandably so, uh, because the the crime of sexual assault and rape is absolutely horrendous, one of the worst things that you could possibly do. But uh, unless you know you have the capacity to remove emotion from it, st step back, look at the evidence that's presented in front of you, you get into this complete clusterfuck, for lack of a better word, of uh, evidence, lack of evidence. She he said, she said, and there doesn't really seem to be much of a way out of it. Yeah, no, and it's it, you know like it. Given his audience, given, uh, the young, the young Turks audience and, and what they are like, I mean, like they, they would not have tolerated, uh, him 
essentially saying, let's wait for all of the evidence to come in. Let's wait for a judgment in a court of law or, you know, mm. some kind of adjudication of, of this allegation, um, whether that's in, in a civil or a criminal court or whether it's uh, an investigation by the company where this alleg- allegedly took place or a third party or something. Let's let's wait and see. Right. Um, he, he would have taken so much fucking heat for that. Um, but it, it really is, you know, essentially, um, you're playing with fire when you are, when you put yourself in that position, um, the position of, of one of these sort of, uh, uber feminist left wing, um, progressive commentators, right? Um, because that comes with all of that baggage, right? That, that women almost mm. never lie about rape. And I mean, we saw Lena Dunham. Uh, end up, you know, getting, taking a, a drubbing in the media over standing by, you know, one of her associates who was accused and, and she said, you know, given what I know about the situation, you know, I don't believe that he did it. And then she had to backpedal and apologize and say, you know, I was wrong to not believe the woman and, you know, all of this because she just got lambasted, um, on social media and just got ripped apart. So essentially, yeah. I mean, like, I would love it if there were people in the progressive left who had the balls to actually take the drubbing and stick to their guns and say, okay, I understand that you're angry with me and I understand that it's costing me audience or readership or followers or whatever. Um, but, you know, I'm going to stick by my principles or, you know, the stance that I took was a principled one and I'm going to stand by it until I, it is demonstrated that it's, you know, that I, I should not, should no longer stand by that. Um, I, w- I would love that. But I just think that the cost, uh, because of the nature of that community, um, and the things that they see as um, absolutes, moral absolutes, I, I just think it costs too much for any of those people who are sort of icons of of the progressive left to actually stick by um, any kind of statement that, oh, okay, we're going to allow due process to take its course, we're going to allow, you know, the facts to fall out before we make a judgment, all of these things, right? No, mm. it, it's, it's, it's just, it's not going to, it's not going to fly with that community. Any other outlet like the Young Turks where something like this happened, I, and the lead guy, the CEO, like somebody like Cenk Uger, uh said, no, I'm going to stick to my guns, we're going to investigate this, we're not going to immediately fire them, I can guarantee to you that their audience, like you said, Karen, they would call for their lynching. There would be thousands of people saying, how can you possibly defend this sort of thing? Women should be believed, and they would be calling for their resignation or for them to be fired. Yeah, no, they'd be a rape apologist, right? And it's it's like, yeah, even, if they, yeah. even if they put the guy on unpaid leave, right, and just said, you know, we're putting him on unpaid leave until the facts are, you know, collected and adjudicated, right? Um, and the mm-hmm. evidence is, is in. Um, even that would not have been enough. I mean, like, it, we're at the point right now where, uh, the, I mean, and I'm, I'm, I hate to come to the defense of Al Franken, right? Yeah. And, and the reason I hate to come to his defense is because he was responsible for, largely responsible for all of the furor around Jamie Lee Jones. Um, and you can read an article about her lawsuit against KBR, which is a military contractor that was uh, she worked for in a, in Iraq, I believe. Um, you know her lawsuit over the horrific, horrific rape she suffered, and all of this. And it just turns out that it just essentially turned out that she's a woman with Munchausen syndrome who makes shit up for uh-huh. attention, right? And Al Franken stood by her. Al Franken had federal legislation changed. Right. Because of this woman. And, yeah. uh, you know, so I hate to come to it, but like, I have to look at the allegations against him and say, OK, you know, he gave some woman a sloppy kiss during a USO tour and uh, and then, oh, you know, uh, pretended to mimed groping her boobs through a flak jacket while she was asleep. Right. I, like, 
I, I just, I keep, whenever I see that picture, I keep seeing that picture of Rebecca Watson, um, you know, that, that oh, feminist yeah. with the dollar bills tucked down her tank top, right? While she's partying at some conference, you know, and she's going on and on about, I don't like to be sexualized, blah, blah, blah. And she's drinking freaking shots out of like, uh, guys, uh, strippers open, male strippers open zippers and stuff. Like, okay. Um, but but she was drunk then, Karen. Oh, and you know yeah, that when women different. are drunk, they can't be responsible for jack shit. It's totally different, right? And so I'm thinking to myself, you know, like this woman who's making these accusations against Al Franken, right? She's engaged in all kinds of pictures of her, like, you know, grabbing guys' butts and stuff and doing all kinds, grinding against them. And I mean, like, this is not... I mean, Scott Adams did a did a live stream on Periscope a while ago where he essentially said, you know, he suggested to all of the people in the chat, and he usually has about 500 people in the chat or watching mm-hmm. live. Um, he doesn't even start until there's 500. Um, and he, so he asks the chat, okay, so just for the men here, have, for whatever reason, right, you know, whether it's, you know, malicious or joking or, you know, uh, the woman thought it was harmless fun or, or whatever, right? Have you ever actually been groped without your consent by a woman, right? Without your mm. consent when you didn't want to be groped, right? And then he, they all said he, yes. he, he, wa- he waits for a minute and then he's like, look at all those yeses going by. Right. And so, you know, like I, I have to actually try to put this in perspective in terms of, of, you know, when you actually look at the, the content of some of these complaints, um, and you think to yourself, you know, women seem to have license to touch men however they want. Um, there was even that pub in Scotland that, that, changed the uniform for their male bar staff from kilts to trousers because there were too many women who got handsy demanding to know if are you a true Scotsman, right, to see if they were wearing underpants, right, and stuck their hands up up these guys' skirts, essentially. Um, and the pub, like, none of these women were, you know, prosecuted for this. The pub just quietly changed the uniform, to something that would prevent their staff, their male staff, from being sexual assault, sexually assaulted, you know, several times a night by drunk women. So, I mean, like, hmm. I have to, I have to keep these, try to keep these things in perspective and say, you know, I met my ex at work. He was, uh, technically my superior. He was up above me in the chain of command, not high up above me, but high enough, right? Um, like, there are people, tons of people who, who end up, uh, you know, meeting their significant other at work. And yes, they are not always in, you know, one cubicle away from each other and doing the exact same job. Um, like I, I just, something needs some common sense and some like reasonableness needs to come into this conversation. Um, and yes, that means looking at the other side of things and saying, you know, like if, if women have license to, you know, touch men in whatever way they want to have sex, to engage in sexual banter and all of these things, right? To sexualize themselves in terms of their dress and, and their conversation and their mode of behavior at work. Um, are we like, are we really going to put it all on men to, be the only ones who have to be adults and maintain some semblance of professionalism? Well, it seems so. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we don't know everything in respect to the story um, at the moment. I'm sure that there are a lot of you out there that have been following this pretty closely. If you have any extra information that we didn't cover for this week's edition of Breaking Badger News, we'd really appreciate it if you put it down in the comments below. Until... You know, the, the next episode, I just want to recommend that, like Karen and I have been doing when it comes to these particular issues, just make sure to stay true to your principles, emphasize the importance of due process, because even like if you're like me and you tend to 
believe women generally because you're just i have a bias even then what you absolutely still need to do is you need to do a thorough investigation so that way if you're going to be shaming or prosecuting somebody you know what you're shaming and prosecuting them for and they could be punished justly or not punished depending on what actually happened or what actually did not happen so anyways that'll do it for us ladies and gentlemen thanks so much for joining us if you like this particular episode of breaking badger news make sure you hit that like button it really helps us in respect to the youtube algorithm make sure that it gets a lot more popularity and like i said if you have any thoughts on what karen and i are said if you agree or disagree with anything that we've said make sure to put your thoughts down in the comment section below that's what it's there for um and if you want to see more content like this make sure you hit that subscribe button we got tons of great videos that come out here every single week from honey badge radio including from yours truly the simpsons kin maximilian Derrett. i want to thank she who must be obeyed karen strawn for uh, joining me at- and and don't thank my dog who's barking because the doorbell just rang. So well, well, thankfully she was quite quiet for the entire show. So I'm very grateful. Make sure you give her a pat on the head for me. And until next time, have a lovely, lovely day. Oh, and uh, finally, before I forget, sorry, I just wanted to say that we currently have a fundraiser going for our very own Brian Martinez, fellow Badger here at Honey Badger Radio, the Doge in Charge. He currently just got out of surgery. Uh, he had a big mass removed from him because unfortunately, you know, he's had cancer. And uh, we wanted to get him something that we think he might appreciate. So if you would please consider going to the link that we have in the description box below and consider donating. We have a couple days left. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day.